don't his eyes just look so beautiful on camera okay all right okay all right Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and if you're new to my channel hello my name is Sabrina I'm the owner of Scrappy Tales Crafts and today I'm going to be featuring one of our new products this is called Easter Lilies so it is a four by six set and I actually illustrated this one and I'm really happy with how the images turned out as you can see you get a bouquet of lilies a lily branch and then a Bible so this is an Easter set but it can really work for any springtime cards which you'll see in today's video I did create two flat cards today and then also this really beautiful pop-up vase card and if you're new to my channel um, I have recently come out with my own stamps and dies and my mom created this amazing new 360 pop-up vase die set and as you can see, no matter which way I turn it, you can see like beautifulness at every angle. Um, so I'll show you guys how I made this. I did slow down the video for the pop-up tutorial. I've been getting some requests to show more of the pop-up tutorials and to also slow down my videos. So it's a longer one. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, yeah, I think I covered everything. If you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I post my next video. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing crafty week. Bye! And I am back and I'm showing you guys the Easter Lily stamp set. Again, I do end up using all of the images in the stamp set and then a couple of the sentiments. So I went ahead and stamped out each image from the stamp set with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink on Bristol cardstock. I clear heat embossed my images and I'm going to color these in with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. So for these lilies, I actually googled lily flowers just to see what their colors are because I knew that a lot of them have two-toned colors. So I went with yellow in the center and then like a peachy pink for the edges of my lilies. Felix the Siamese is just walking right over my colored images, which he does all the time. That's just, if you have a cat, you probably have experienced this. He is my little coworker and He's actually on my desk right now because there's flowers that I got for my birthday. I have them on my table and he tries to like take the flowers out of the vase and drag them all throughout the house. There are lilies in the bouquet, strangely enough, and I actually colored them the exact same way. So I was looking at the lilies as coloring reference, and I will say that they're poisonous to cats, um, I read. So if you have any cats and you didn't know that, be careful. Lilies and some other flowers are toxic for little cats so i am making sure to watch him and the reason that the flowers are in my craft room is because once i leave the room i like lock it up and he can't go in there anymore so yeah i'm just going to color in the leaves now and i'm going to use two green markers and if you're new to my channel the way i color with zigs and really any coloring medium is i start with my darkest marker and I just map out my shadow areas. So for the leaves, I'm adding that darker green towards the center of the leaves and also at the base of each leaf and each stem. And then I go over the darker color with my mid-tone marker and kind of extend the color more towards the edges. And then I go in with my water brush to blend the two colors together. And because I'm using water, it's going to dilute the pigment and create a highlight color so usually with copics i use three markers so um, a dark medium and light color with my zigs i always go with a dark and mid-tone and then my water brush acts as my highlight color and i don't add a whole lot of pigment as you can see i'm leaving quite a bit of white space because i do like or i do prefer a brighter highlight with my zigs so I have had this 72 pack of zigs probably for six or seven years now and they're all 
I have not had to replace any markers because I hardly use any pigment. So here for the bow, I made it blue and I'm just using one marker here and my water brush. I did go over the center of the bow again with the same blue marker just to darken it. For the Bible, I colored the lily on the cross with the same orange or like yellow and pink combination. And then I'll make this Bible a dark gray color. So again, I'm just using the one gray marker. I added it to the edges of the Bible and I'm using my water brush to pull that dark color towards the center, creating a center highlight. And the water brush that I'm using is a Winka Stella pen. However, it's one that was empty. I refilled it with water and mixed in a little bit of gold perfect pearls. And you still get some really pretty shimmer from that gold perfect pearls all that i would suggest is that you shake your pen up every time you use it because it will kind of clump in the water but as long as you shake it you're going to get some really pretty shimmer and you don't have to keep buying Winka Stella pens a lot of you guys think i'm like using an actual Winka Stella pen for all of my water coloring but I don't that's my little hack for you i've been doing it for a couple years and i'm telling you guys the gold perfect pearls looks almost exactly like the original um winka stella pen you can do the perfect pearl color which is like a silver color and get more of that um, nouveau shimmer pen look but i love the original gold winka stella so i always put gold in my pen so i wanted to show you another color combo that i did for this little lily branch and I wanted them to be pink and I saw a photo reference where the edges of the petals are pretty much white so I added the color right to the center of each petal and I am just going in with my water brush to move the pigment to the outer edges of the petals but I'm constantly wiping my brush off on a paper towel to not spread too much pigment because I do want those edges to almost look completely white. It is slightly pink, but um, as you can see, there's quite a bit of contrast. And I did that just because the photo references showed that um, really dark center and the light edges. So I'm really happy with how these turned out. And for my pop-up base, I went with these dark pink lilies. And then for the flat cards, I went with the yellow and peach lilies. So for my first card here, I am blending on some Mermaid Lagoon with my blender brush onto this stitch rectangle panel. I am concentrating most of the color towards the bottom and letting it fade off into white. And then I'm going to take a Hero Arts stamp. This came in a kit. I think it came in the January kit from last year, and it has like a newspaper print. So I'm just going to stamp that out with the same Mermaid Lagoon ink. I'm actually going to stamp it once onto some scratch paper and stamp the second generation onto this panel just so that it's a little bit lighter and not too overwhelming. I actually did, um, I messed up this panel the first time because I was using the first generation and it was just too distracting. So you'll see um, once I flip this panel around, you can see um, that first attempt I made and I didn't like it quite so much. It was a little bit too dark. So luckily there is two sides to every paper. So I just flipped it around and redid the blending and the stamping. So I matted that newspaper ink blended panel onto an orange mat. That's just one eighth of an, one eighth of an inch larger. And then I'm going to use my single stem lily branch and my Bible for this card, I stamped out Have a Blessed Easter on the bottom right corner with my VersaFine Onyx black ink. And I am going to pop up both the Bible and the lily with some foam tape. And I'm going to tuck the Bible in between the leaves of this lily once I get the backing paper off. And I like how that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and just glue that down. I will flip the orange mat around, add some ATG tape and glue it onto my 110 pound white Nina A2 card base. 
And then the only other thing I'm going to do with this card is add some orange Nouveau drops. I really didn't have an embellishment that was orange. So I remember Nouveau drops were really popular a few years ago. I don't know if they're as popular now, but it was like a direct match to the coloring of my flowers. So I just scattered a few of those at a diagonal, and then that is going to complete my first card. Really pretty. By the way, the sentiments on this stamp set were hand-lettered by my mom. So we're definitely a business, like a family business. My mom and I are crafters. My grandma is a painter slash artist. So I come from a family of very creative people. My grandma is also like a knitter, a card maker, scrapbooker. She does like a lot of hand crafts and paper crafts. So... For card two, I have these lattice pieces, which I cut from the new pop-up basket die set. These are actually meant to decorate the basket. So I just cut them from white cardstock and I'm going to glue them onto this card base here. And I don't need very many because I knew there was gonna be a blue stitch rectangle that was gonna go in the center. So I did not need to cover this entire background completely. You're gonna see, I'm going to add the first three lattice pieces at the top of this card base and then I'll pull in my blue rectangle to see where I need to add the rest of my lattice pieces. So I am going to trim some of them in half. I'll trim some of them down so that they all fit nicely. And the die was designed to be a continuous pattern. So it doesn't matter if you line it up on the left, the right, or the top and bottom, it will continue on to create one big background if you want, which is what I'm doing now. So I think I used a total of six lattice rectangles. So this one I trimmed down a little bit just to add to the bottom of this panel. And you can see that there is a little spot in the center that I didn't bother to glue down. Alright, for the sentiment on this card, I'm going to take Easter Greetings. I'm inking it up with my VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. This is by far my favorite black ink for sentiments. It does take a while to dry, so I typically will clear heat emboss it, just so that I don't smear it, and I planned on fussy cutting this sentiment. The Easter Lilies stamp set does have a coordinating die set, but I left mine at my mom's house. So I had to fussy cut all of the lilies. And you're gonna see for my pop-up vase, I fussy cut a green backer for all of my flowers. You'll see what I'm talking about in the next card. But I highly recommend dies, especially if you're going to create a pop-up with this stamp set. I could have also used my scan and cut, which is probably what I should have done. But I'm just gonna finish up fussy cutting this sentiment. And this is gonna go at the bottom of my blue stitch rectangle. And I love that white on white lattice background adds some really nice interest but the focal point is still those really pretty lilies again i'm going to mat the blue panel with some orange cardstock just going to adhere everything down with my atg gun i think i pop up the lily bouquet with some foam tape And then I will glue the Easter greetings sentiment flat with my art glitter glue. And then that is pretty much going to complete the second card. Again, I'm going to take those orange Nouveau drops and add a few of those. I really have been enjoying lately coloring a bunch of images in the same color scheme and creating similar cards, but not exactly the same, but I like that they all coincide with the colors, so they make really great card sets. So here I'm bringing in those orange drops. I'm just going to add a couple of those. 
Both of my card bases are actually top folding. I normally do side folding, but I decided to change things up today. That is going to complete card number two. Very pretty, and I love that shimmer when you tilt the bouquet in the light. So now we're going to go ahead and work on that beautiful pop-up vase. And so I went ahead and used the Scrappy Tails vase die set. And I cut the card base twice from heavyweight cardstock. And then these lace panels eight times. You get two of the lace panels. So I only had to cut it four times. And then you end up with eight panels to decorate your card base. So that's what I'm doing now. I just cut those lace pieces from light blue cardstock. And I'm using my art glitter glue to attach them down. And then there is a half inch tab at the very end of this panel. And that is where you're going to add your double sided tape. So I glued down the lace panels on the other panel. And then I'll just go ahead and add my double sided tape. I have been getting questions about the U-line tape that I use and it is always listed down in the video description. This particular tape is super sticky. It is industrial strength. And one thing I would highly recommend with really any pop-up card is to use heavyweight cardstock and very strong tape because this entire card is held together with those two pieces of tape. So right now I'm just reinforcing the score lines. I'm bending them all downwards and then I can go ahead and attach each end of the card panels together to create this octagon vase. Really pretty and super simple. All right, so I'm adding this in because I plan on adding these leaves with my lilies. The baby's breath and all the leaves are included in the Scrappy Tails Assorted Leaves die set. And I really love adding the baby's breath in to a lot of my floral bouquets. They just add a really pretty texture without distracting too much from the actual florals that are inside the vase. So included in the pop-up vase die set are these bridges. So I cut four bridges. And as you can see, there are three score lines. There's two on each end, which is meant for your double-sided tape. And then there's a score line in the center. So I'm folding all of the score lines downwards and I'm making sure to point the two tabs towards each other to create that triangle shape. You wanna make sure that you have that before adding your bridges inside your vase. So right now I'm just gonna pick any point on this vase. It does not matter which one you start with. And I'm going to glue one tab of the bridge right up to one of the corners of the score line of one point on the vase. Then you're going to skip the next point on the vase and go to the third point. So I just added my first one in, now we'll add the second. I'm gonna butt up one tab of the bridge right next to the one that I just glued down. I'm going to skip the next point and then glue the other tab to the following point. And then we do the same thing. We attach the tab right up to the bridge that we just added, right up to the score line without overlapping. If you overlap, it's not gonna fold properly. So what I like to do is I like to pinch the bridge to make sure that it gets right up to that corner. I'm going to skip the next point and then glue the other tab to the next point. And then I'll just add my final bridge, same thing. I'm gonna skip the one point and go straight to the next. And that is it. Those bridges are going to hold all of your elements inside the vase. And as long as you're left with that star shape, you are good to go. So here's what I was talking about. I went ahead and backed all of my lilies with some green cardstock. That is because you're going to be seeing the back of these stamps. And I didn't want you to see the, or I didn't want to see the Copic coloring that bled through the back. So obviously if you had the coordinating dies, this would be super easy. All you'd have to do is just die cut it from green cardstock and layer it behind. So I'm going to start with my larger lily bouquets first. I thought at first I was gonna just use two of the large bouquets, but I will add that third one in. I'm going to move some flowers around just until I get the placement that I like. 
I'm going to try to cover up as much of that green as possible. So I'm going to glue one of the single stemmed lilies directly onto the back of the large lily bouquet. So here's where I decide that I do want to add a third bouquet. So I just trimmed off the bow and the stems at the bottom and I'm going to glue it onto one of the bridges. And I am gluing these flowers directly onto the bridges and some of the flowers I am gluing onto the card base. So I actually add glue in front of the stem, which is what I just did there. And then I glue the front of the stem onto the back of the card base. And that is just going to give you even more depth to work with and really fill your vase nicely. You can see as I'm adding my different images in, I do like to close it just to make sure that nothing is going to get caught and that it will fit in the A7 envelope. So the actual height of the vase is three inches. So that gives you about four inches of height to work with. And as long as you stay within the vase, you can go a little bit outside of it um, and it will still fit in the envelope. So right now I added all of the lilies in, so I'm going to go and fill any extra space up with my leaves and my baby's breath. And I add quite a bit of baby's breath. I love that pop of white. I will say that I like to add my images in first with three in one, mostly my large images, just in case I want to move things around. Like you saw at the beginning of this space, I took one of the stems out and replaced it with another. If you use three in one, you have enough time to do that. If you use art glitter glue, it's pretty much an instant bond and it's very strong. So you might rip your image if you try to remove it. So at this point I am using my art glitter glue just because I know these are fillers and they're not quite as important. And I feel a little bit more confident gluing these down. Um, but I would suggest if you can get three in one, I buy it at Michael's. That's a really nice strong glue once it does dry, but it gives you some wiggle room to move your images around. So I'm just going to add that one leaf right at the top, and I think this is going to complete the vase. You can really keep going if you want. This is quite full. Here I found another area I can add another leaf. And yeah, I think that's it. Nope, more baby's breath. <laughs> And you can add a sentiment to one of the panels, but I just left it as is. This can really work for any occasion. So here I'm just twirling the vase around so that you can see it is a complete 360 design. I love that it can just stand upright on a table and I guarantee you all of the work you put into this card will be worth it. I seriously doubt anyone is gonna throw this type of card away. It's just so beautiful. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, the products that I use will be listed down below. And these are products that my family and I have designed. So if you do purchase something, know that you're supporting my family business. And I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.